This is the first part of the developer tutorial for the resource editor, which is essentially a user's, a user's tool. So you should, if you want to understand how to use the resource editor, you should follow the resource editor tutorial. This is designed for developers to help them understand how to take something like this, like the demo we've created as part of uh, the developer guide tool, uh, of the user guide uh, tool, and how to attach functionality to it, how to bind it to code. To do that, we go to the GUI builder right here, and we, can, we see that we actually have all sorts of actions around here, all sorts of things that we can bind, but they're all disabled. So I want to take this resource file that a creative person created for us and essentially bind to it all sorts of functionality in the code. To do that, we can just uh, open this and go to Midlet and generate a NetBeans project. Now you need to have NetBeans installed, which as you can see in the background, I have right behind me. Now I need to select the main form. It's one of these that I want to be the first form of the application. In this case, it's easy, it's a splash screen and I select that. Now I need to give a name to the project, so I'll call it Ratio Demo. I prefer not to use spaces or anything like that. And now I need to select a place where I want the Ratio Demo to run, and as you can see I've shown this demo around quite a bit. Uh, I'll place it right here. So now you can't really see this, but NetBeans is flashing right behind me in the bar. And it's flashing behind me because it created and selected this project on the fly. Now, if you'll notice, the resource file which I've just had open is right here, expanded. And I've got two folders right here. The user classes folder and the generated folder. Now, how does this work exactly? Let's go back to the ratios demo itself and we'll have to reload and now as you can see once I've reloaded this page I've got all sorts of options here. Uh, action event which binds to an action event of a button or something of that sort. On create when a form is created, before show when a form is about to be shown and post show when a form was uh, created and show was already invoked. We also have additional options we, which we can customize like for instance in the commands I can go to any command and now I have an option go to source which will essentially jump to the area in the source code where back is invoked where I can actually add functionality to the call for the back command. In this case I might not want to do that because the back command already has functionality and it's navigation based but I can potentially add additional navigation additional functionality and how do I do that I just press go to source and you can't see it again but NetBeans is blinking and the reason it's blinking is that I have source code to actually maintain right here. And this is the on bread back which essentially as you can see the naming convention is this the name of the form which is bread and the name of the command which is back. So on bread back gets called and I need to return true or false, whether I handle the command in a way that I don't want the UI builder to continue. That is, if I return true from here, that essentially means it's okay, I'm, I've am i not hand, I've handled uh, the command, and if I return false, uh, that means I didn't do anything, so you can keep going and just implement back. I can technically do something here and return false anyway. I don't need, and that way I can do additional functionality like cleanup and things like that and just handle it. Now how does this work? As you can see I have two classes here. State machine and the user classes and generated over here. I've got an additional class which is the main class which just you know does the basic initialization stuff like that. It's automatically generated. It also includes a RIM code for basic ex uh, execution on a RIM device and that's relatively simple. Other than that I have the state machine base and here it says essentially don't modify this. It's a class that's always automatically generated and here you can see we've got lots and lots of boilerplate code to work with the uh, Lewitt components. All sorts of ifs and stuff like that and all sorts of callback methods that are built in for all the different co uh, components that the designer placed within the GUI builder. And what we do here in this class, 
uh, Lewis essentially looks, the Lewis resource editor, uh, looks for this method, a method with this given convention, and just overrides it. And because this class derives from the state machine base, from the automatically generated class, uh, this method will be called automatically. Now, if I just want to remove it, I can just remove it as it is, and everything will work as expected. Or I can just type it in manually, or I can let the resource editor just add it in. It's that just that simple. If I remove it or do something of that sort, like, like this, and then press again on the go to source code, it will just add it again. It's not very clever. And that's the thing I like about this tool is that it's really simple and stupid. And uh, having a very stupid tool is very useful because it's easier for a developer to understand what is going on and easier for us not to break that tool. If you want to delve deeper, you can just look at the source code for state machine base. Just don't modify it. Just look at it and understand what's going on and you can debug it and you can use it as it is. Just don't change it because Lewitt will constantly change it. Now, what if you want to refactor these classes? It's really simple. All you need to do in order to refactor this is go to uh, this file, which is right in the root of the project. And as you can see here, we actually say the name of the generated class and the name of the user class. And essentially, you can move them to be in any package in any place. And the main form you can change, and you can change the package of the generated class. And you can just edit this and ju then just reopen the file within the resource editor. One of the few assumptions that we have is that the res file is in the root of the package. That's one of the very few assignments, uh, assumptions we have. And the properties file needs to be in the root of the project below SRC. This needs to be in SRC and this needs to be below that. Other than these two assumptions, you can pretty much place the classes anywhere you want and will just work. Now, to show you that this works pretty much uniformly everywhere, I'll also attach a command to a button. So, for instance, ah, better yet, even to a combo box I can do that. So, I can just do this and select action event right here. And it's blinking again. And on red combo box one, I didn't name the combo box, of course. So it's called combo box one. Action. And that's it. Now, you'll notice I have a super all right here. And also here. It's not necessary, technically. It doesn't do anything, really. The reason the super call exists right here is so if someone goes back to uh, Lewitt, and essentially, let's give this a proper name here, like uh, uh, flower wait, which is the right name, and save. Now I'll go back here, and this will no longer compile, right? Because there won't be a method below. You see now, ah, here. So if I'll try to compile the project now, it won't because the super call doesn't exist. And as you can see, it's no longer overriding a method. So once I see this, I can understand that uh, this doesn't exist. I can edit this manually or I can just, uh, instead of that, just go back into here and press action event again. And now I'll have the new correct source code and I can move my code from here over to here. And that's pretty much it. Now I can essentially stick here any, any type of code that I want, and it will just work. Now, as you can see, I also get the arguments that I normally need. Like, for instance, I get the component that uh, sent the action. I get the actual, actual action event instance. And I can pretty much do anything I want. Uh, for instance, before show, uh, ah, as you can see, I modified the source code, and I changed it from here as well. So it's asking me if I want to save my changes or not. I'll reload it. I'll just take the changes from the code. Um, so this is no longer needed. And here I'm getting before the form is shown. I'm getting the method. It's got the form in it. And if I want to change something before the form is shown, I can do something like find uh, by name. 
and I can give a name of the component, like for instance, in this case, uh, flower weight, like this, in the form, and now I can actually cast it to jcombo box, and and now I can actually change the. Sorry, I too much swing recently, you know, J combo box here. Yeah. And now I can just do whatever I want with this uh, component as it is and uh, just modify it in any way I, I see fit, like uh, adding additional listeners or changing its model or anything of that type. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments in the blog. Thank you.